It's Kyle, and it's been a while since my last review, but as I mentioned, um, I was in the process of um, moving into a new house, um, which I'm still doing. I'm mostly settled in. But I'm still unpacking some stuff, so I'm not ready to give a video tour of the new place yet, but I haven't got enough stuff done. I thought I had a time I could take a little break and do a book review since it's been a while. Um, so the book I'd like to talk about today is um, The Catcher Was a Spy by Nicholas Dodadoff. I might be mispronouncing his um, last name, it's spelled D-A-W-I-D-O-F-F. -F. Um, this is a non sorry, non non-fiction biography about Moberg. Um, kind of basic book, background on Moberg. Um, he was a professional baseball player, played 15 seasons in the majors, but he was never really a star. He was always kind of backup catcher and played some, um, but he became very famous. And the reason he became very famous was that he was a genius. Um, so baseball writers absolutely loved him because um, he, he always get these you know unique quotes and they could ask, they could interview him about you know politics in Russia or the word origin of you know some random term and he'd be able to spout it off. He was just a one of those guys um, which a lot of people know is you know whenever you ask him he's just an expert at trivia. He can answer any question. Um, kind of illustrate how smart he actually was. Um, he was said to be able to speak 12 languages. He attended Princeton University, and then he went to Columbia Law School. So you might ask, you know, how did a guy that was, you know, that smart end up playing baseball? Um, well, he was the child of an immigrant, and um, like a lot of children of immigrants, um, they all really try to establish their identity um, as an American, and they try to shed their identity as an immigrant because they want to try to fit in. Um, and Moberg was very much in that mode and that's why he started playing baseball. He kind of saw baseball as being this very much American thing. There's nothing more American to Moberg than playing baseball. So as a kid he started playing it. His dad hated it because he thought his brilliant son was wasting his um, intelligence on this dumb American sport. He just never got it. Um, but Moberg did it carry. kept on playing baseball and eventually got him to the major leagues. Um, but what really um, defined Moberg's life was um, when World War II started and he became a spy for the American government. Um, and kind of a neat line on the back of the book that is, um, kind of points that out. Moberg is the only professional baseball player whose baseball card is on display at the headquarters of the CIA. Um, so that's kind of an interesting tidbit or fact. Um, and Moberg fit, fat, sorry, fit right in as being a spy. His personality was perfect for it. He was always a bit of eccentric and always had weird, real weird habits and stuff. And he really was the perfect spy. His personality was made for it. Um, so he ran several missions in Europe during the war um, in Italy and some other European countries. And obviously his um, various languages he spoke was proved very useful. The problem for Moberg was when the World War II ended um, and his service was no longer needed as a spy. The problem was he loved being a spy so much he really wouldn't give it up and he refused to almost move on with his life. So even though with his intelligence he could have done several stuff. He could have been a practicing lawyer. Um, he could have taught. Um, several pro baseball teams offered him jobs as coaches. Um, he turned it all down because he, he just couldn't give up being a spy. So he continuously almost lived his life as a spy even though he wasn't a spy anymore. Um, so after he kind of ended his spying official career um, he just kind of wandered around. He didn't really live anywhere. He kind of stayed with his brother a lot of the time, but then he would just go on these long trips. And throughout his baseball career, he'd made friends throughout the country. So um, friends throughout this book would tell stories, you know, they might not have seen Moberg for like a year or two, and then all at once he would just show up at their home and ask if he could stay for a while. He'd stay for a few weeks. Um, his friends loved him because he was very charismatic, and like he knew all these interesting facts. So it's like you were meeting this you know, genius and hanging out with him. Um, but then after two or three weeks, he would just get up and not say where he was going, he would just leave. And then he wouldn't see him again for two or three years, and then he would just show up again. Um, and he had all these weird habits. He would carry newspapers around with him, stacks of them, and until he read them, um, he wouldn't let anybody else touch them. So if he came and touch this newspaper, he just would freak out. Um, when people asked him what he was doing, because, you know, after the war was over, they were wondering, you know, what, well, what are you doing as a career and stuff? He would just put his uh, finger to his lip and that's all he would do. And, you know, his friends all said, basically they thought he was implying that he was still a spy and he could have, you know, talked about his job, but he wasn't a spy. Um, he just kind of lied to people thinking he was a spy. So that was kind of like how Moberg lived the rest of his life with this wanderer just going from 
around the country, you know, staying at friends' places, house, you know, for a week or two, then moving on. Um, but he, he was still semi kind of a celebrity because, like, these baseball writers still remember this genius baseball player. And so every once in a while somebody would write an article about him. He knew all these famous people. Um, so he still kind of remained a bit of a celebrity. Um, he was basically able to live this life until he passed away in 1972. So for, you know, almost 25 years, he didn't have a career. He just kind of wandered the country hanging out with people. Um, so Moberg was definitely a centric, definitely a unique person, um, definitely a one-of-a-kind person. Um, so I'd say even if you're not a sports fan, um, this is a great book because Moberg was just a fascinating person. It's a great character study of this individual. And I the author did an excellent job of trying to figure out what exactly made Moberg tick. And I'd say also if you're not somebody that's interested in history or, you know, World War II and stuff, don't let that scare you off too. Because like I said, all that, the baseball and the war and all that stuff, that's kind of background stuff. The real central thing of this book is Moberg and the kind of study of this unique and eccentric figure. It's almost one of those guys, you know, you almost can't believe he is a real person. He seems like something being made up for a Hollywood movie or something. So I definitely recommend you go out and read um, The Catcher Was a Spy. Um, great read, um, and I hope you um, check it out. And hopefully I'll have another review up very soon now that I'm done um, um, unpacking on the most part. I think I'll be able to do reviews on a much more regular basis. So go read The Catcher Was a Spy.